Yo, it's DIY Grappler back on the scene again. It's coming back for a quick, uh, quick video, right quick. So I just want to go through like a little, you know, nice and easy, respectful uh, debate, you know, between dry, dry pour and wet pour. So, you know, the whole thing, I don't know why I'm super obsessed with this dry pour thing. It's more or less to, to really find out you know, the answers because, you know, the drive pour versus wet pour, wet pour stronger. It's possibly is, it could be stronger, but do we really, really know? Now I want to, I want to, you know, I look at things from a different perspective, a different light. So if we're talking about drive, dry pour versus wet pour, what's stronger? Now let's think about this because the wording is, you know, I'm not a lawyer, but you know, in law and in, in the world wording, you know, is very important. So you got to think about this. So if I make a six inch dry pour slab with fiber and reinforcements cured for 30 days, and then on the opposite side of that, there is a wet pour slab, one inch thick, cured for 24 hours, which one's gonna be stronger? Probably the dry pour is. So when it comes to wording, the dry pour versus wet pour, it's very, you know, it's a little shaky. You know what I'm saying? Uh, <clears throat> I don't know why I'm so obsessed with this dry pour thing again. It's like, it's almost kind of like I'm a new guy because I'm, you know, I'm fresh with this. You know, I'm new to this DIY thing. Like I said, I'm a jujitsu guy. I was in the MMA thing. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, I own businesses. I'm a businessman. So it's kind of like I'm a new guy on the block, like at a high school. And then it's like, hey, here's Mr. Uh, oh, here's uh, me, you know, dry pour guy. And I'm like, dang, why, why is dry pour getting picked on so much? You know, it's kind of like dry pour is kind of like the underdog. Why is dry pour getting picked on so much, buddy? You all right? You know, everybody's taking your lunch money and saying you're so weak. I'm, uh, so I'm over here thinking like, how do I, how can we get you stronger, my friend? You know what I'm saying? Maybe if you lift a little weights, maybe if you take a little creatine, some protein powder, you know, work out, you know, three, four, five days a week. Maybe you can get, you know, a little stronger here at dry pour. So anyway, um, so yeah, that's where I'm at. You know, I just really want to know, you know, wet pour, it could be stronger. You know I mean? It could, you know, or the dry pour could be equal or maybe not. Maybe dry pour. Maybe, like I said, I'm, I'm waiting for this guy. I forgot his name, Tyler something. This guy's like a P has a PhD. This guy's like a professor really waiting on his insight, you know, and, and I'm kind of at the point where it's like, damn, this guy says there's no way in heck that, that the dry pour could be strong as, as the wet pour. I'm, I'm really, you know, 99.9%, .9 you know, going to believe that, you know what I'm saying? You know, so I just want to, you know, for me personally, I'm, I'm just looking to, you know, come to a conclusion. I don't know why. You know, I don't know why I'm even so obsessed with this thing or why am I so engulfed? You know what I'm saying? It's just, I, maybe that's just the kind of person I am that I get into something and I kind of, you know, want to dig deep and then really learn about it and, and then, you know, see about this thing. So anyway, that's my little debate, you know, is uh, this is my, you know, my little rant thing going on here, like dry pour versus wet pour. You know, the wording got to be, you know, got to be right, because like, like I said earlier, if we did the dry pour in a certain way and a wet pour in a certain way. The dry pour is going to be stronger for sure. But now the real test is going to be equal. Like, you know, and the thing, in the, another thing with this, the wet pour thing, you got to think about. So with the wet pour, the instructions, 60 pound bag, put two and a half quarts of water and it's supposed to, you know, go to 4,000 PSI. That's another thing with the PSIs, because you got to think, say if we did a, say if we did a dry pour, with fiber reinforcement, uh, uh, rebar reinforcements, 4,000 PSI, six inches versus a wet pour, one inch, you know, maybe 2,000 PSI cured for 24 hours. The other one's cured for 30 days. The dry pour is going to be stronger. Like I can almost bet on that, you know? So the real test is like, if everything's equal, the thing is with the dry pour is that when we dry pour this, nobody's really counting or, or calculating uh if that's the right word the water of how much water we're adding so when you uh you know this weekend when i did the deal i put the 60 pound bag of uh, 4,000 psi high strength concrete it, it called for you know two and a half quarts of water and then bada bing bada boom boom you mix it up it's good to go you're done now with the dry pour the things that we're putting into these forms and then we're misting it and then we missed it again and then we water it. Even some of the tests I've been seeing, you know, and then you water it and then you test. But the thing is that nobody's really calculating how much water is going into that, to that dry pour. It's almost like we can't tell, you know what I'm saying? So even in a wet pour, so again, let's go back to the wet pour thing. If I put a 60 pound bag of, you know, that calls for two and a half quarts of water 
and then I only put a quart and a half for sure that it's not going to be, it's not going to be right. You know, I put a quart and a half of water. It's going to be real, you know, dusty. Maybe it's going to be, it's not going to be wet enough, put it that way. So the thing with the dry pour is that we're kind of not even, I guess we're just going straight to that curing method of just over soaking it. So when you do these tests, it's like, we're not, act, nobody, I don't say nobody because I, you know, I, let me not even talk about anybody else. But the thing is that like, you know, the the exact amount of water is not you know what i'm saying i don't know if you can kind of catch my drift here you know the dry pours just we're kind of guessing and just throwing random water in there for a long time the wet pours are getting the exact amount of water that it needs to you know that it calls for so you know that's it pretty much for the for this little short video that uh yeah i'm still digging deep i still want to see you know do i know which one's stronger than the other no um, do I want to figure out a way how to get dry pour strong enough or at least equal? Maybe if it's possible, it, that's the most thing about it. Is it even possible? Because I'm not like no magic worker where I'm just like, all right, I can magically make dry pour stronger, but is there a way to make it strong? You know, there's all these other additives and, you know, fibers and, and, you know, um, rebar and I'm sure I'm missing some too. There's probably some other ones to make it stronger. So really, ultimately, what I'm looking to do is do a driveway out of it. I'm probably going to be the first guy. I'm really leaning towards it, whether it cracks or not, especially because if I put them in slabs. If it cracks, what do I do? I just resurface it or take the whole slab out and redo the slab. And all concrete cracks. You know, I'm looking around. I'm going around. My father actually had his, uh, had a, I forgot what it was, a driveway or his backyard done you know, you know, years ago. And he said within like a year, it was wet pour. Within a year or two, it cracked. So it's like, even the wet pour is cracking, you know, and, and look at this in a year or two. So I, I could see the argument, okay, it's not going to last that long. What about in the future? But how come I'm here? You know, I'm hearing these stories of people, people's wet pour uh, cracking within a year or two, three years, you know what I'm saying? And maybe that's due to like, you know, when the concrete, you know, people are doing their deal, they, you know, they, they leave and then, uh, you know, and they let the customers know. I'm not saying they're deceiving anybody they're, or they're short, you know, cutting anybody. They let them know, hey, you got to keep on watering it. So now it's at the point on you as a customer to like continue to water this, to continue to cure it for it to gain its full strength. The thing is that we don't like the lack of knowledge. I'm just learning more and more every day. The lack of knowledge thinking that like, okay, it's wet poured or it's poured. And then I got my driveway and it's done. Like that's it. I'm going to drive on it. We're good to go. So now the more I'm learning about like ponding and, uh, burlap you know burlap curing and all these other different methods fogging there, there's another one called i think it's called fogging there's all these other methods and to continue how to cure it so you know that's it you know i'm still digging deep for the diy guys <clears throat> and girls um trying to figure out how we can make this dry pour strong enough for what we need you know i'm not saying like hey we're gonna build a sky skyscraper out of the dry pour and the thing is i don't even want to downplay it like that like oh it's not strong enough it's probably not i don't know you know it's probably not i wouldn't you know go ahead and just make a skyscraper skyscraper out of this dry pour but i just want it at least strong enough or find a way to make it strong enough for my driveway i want to make a driveway that's all i really need that's probably the furthest i'm going to go with uh with any kind of concrete whether i wet pour it whether i dry pour it i'm probably going to go ahead and dry pour it because i just want to make you know, I want to be that guy that kind of goes against the grain. And, you know, I've always, I always say this to my students, hey, learn the rules so you can break them. So, you know, I'm trying to learn these rules. I'm trying to learn the details of this. And not that I want to break any rules. I just want to, I want to break the rules of, of it's not weak. So I want to break the rules on the opposite side. Like, you know what? Okay. You know, people think it's weak. I want to make it strong. And I want to make it, not only do I want to make it strong, I want to, la I want to, I want to make it last for a long time. I'm sure there's ways. So that's pretty much where it is, where it is, is, is the dry pour concrete strong enough for a driveway with fibers, reinforcement, proper curing? And that's the extent of where I'm at with it, you know? So that's it, you know? Everybody, uh, you know, thanks for watching and uh, more videos coming soon. Peace.